Hey everyone, Susan Thomas here, and today I'm going to teach you how to make no solder wavy bangles. All right, everybody, today I'm going to teach you how to make a bangle, but it's solder free. You're not going to have to use any solder, so that's pretty exciting. Still looks just like a classic bangle, but you're not going to need any flame. So stick around. It's going to be lots of fun. It is a metal smithing project. We're going to use some copper wire to do this. So um, make sure that uh, you're ready with all your hammers and all your tools. <laughs> Let me just kind of explain to you everything that I've got out here so you'll know what's going on. First of all, like I said, I'm gonna use a copper wire to do this. Copper is a great way to get started with metalwork, even if you're not soldering, because it's not an alloy. It's actually, uh, which is a, a mix of metals, it's actually just one solid metal all the way through. So you can hammer it, you can file it, you can scratch it, you can do whatever you want to and polish it, which is really, really nice. So this is a 14 gauge copper wire that I'm working with today. And that's a little over two millimeters, so it's a nice thick wire. I do not recommend using anything thinner for a bangle. Now, in addition to that, we're also gonna have lots of other things. This is a bangle die, so it's kind of wavy down the center. We're actually gonna smash that copper wire between there and give it a really pretty pattern, which kind of makes it special. This is a bench block, which I'll use for doing a little bit of hammering. And uh, then I've got some basic tools here. We've got our flush cutter. One of my favorites, as always. This is a uh, bail shaping plier. You can also use a round nose if you don't have a bail shaper. And a flat nose plier. Then I have got a permanent marker. I'm just using that to make some marks on my wires so I keep everything the right length. This is a file that I will use to file things down. And so then I also have, this is a, this is a wire rounder. It's kind of like a cupper. It is battery operated. It just rounds the end of your wire. And I always use that on projects like this because it makes it a little easier to make things smooth. And then I have got my chasing hammer, my handy dandy chasing hammer here that we will use to hammer things. And I have another hammer this baby right here. This is just a, a mallet. It's actually a brass mallet. It's very heavy and you need it to uh, actually hammer onto the bangle die. You need a little weight when you're doing that. You can use your arm, your muscle, but it's easier if you've got a weighted hammer. So it doesn't have to be a brass mallet, just something heavy. Go into your husband's tool chest and take the heaviest hammer you can find. That one's perfect. <laughs> And then the only other thing I think I have here is a ruler for measuring. I have got a, a steel bracelet mandrel that we will use at the very end just to kind of hammer things out. And then I have a little bit of liver of sulfur, sulfur gel here. Probably won't use that today, but I wanted you to know that because it's copper, you can actually oxidize it and make it really, really pretty. All right, so I'm gonna take my copper 14 gauge wire and just pull out about a foot of it right there and uh, then just cut that off that's usually just a, just the right amount to do something like this I might be might be a little overkill but I um, think for your very first project it's better to have a little bit more and copper wire is super inexpensive so I don't worry about it quite so much so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna measure out the length of your bangle now bangles are kind of funny people have a hard time measuring bangles because they always measure their wrist and think, oh, that's how I measure my bangle. No, you actually have to measure your fist because the bangle has to go over this biggest part of your hand right here. So um, when I make bangles for people to measure them, I actually measure around this part. That's what it's gotta go over. So an eight and a half inch bangle, eight and a quarter, eight and a half inch bangle is really a nice medium sized bangle. So we're gonna make medium bangles today. And so I'm gonna measure this starting at about two inches. I'm gonna give it a measure right there, just a little mark. And then I'm gonna put that two inch mark, let me put this up in the picture so you guys can see this. I'm gonna put that mark right at the end of my ruler and then mark it again at eight and a quarter inches because I wanna make an eight and a quarter inch bangle because it's a perfect medium sized bangle and I happen to wear a medium sized bangle. One size fits most. If you want, a small, you want to go down a quarter inch to an eight inch. If you want a large, you're going to go up a quarter inch to an eight and a half. Now, now that I've got those two little marks there, I'm going to take my flat nose plier and I'm going to bend this back into a 90 degree angle, just like that. And then I'll turn it over, find my other mark and do the same thing. Now, the reason I'm doing this, you guys are probably confused, 
is because I actually have to make a catch on this bangle so that I can close it, but I don't, I don't want to solder it. Normally I would just cut it there at the end and solder it because I'm not soldering and I have to make a pretty little catch. And I found that I really like to make a little hook and eye and it looks really great. And so that's what we're going to do. So that's what these two little legs are for. So then I'm just going to use my mandrel now to wrap this around to make it round because you can see my bangle die is round. So I need a round shape to do that with. And I always kind of go up a little smaller on the bangle. You can see I have my bangle die marked at a medium right here because that's, I know that's where it ends up at the end. And um, so I'm just wrapping it around there and then pulling it down so that the two little legs don't overlap anymore. So when you're done with that, and I've got one already done here, it's gonna look like this. And you can see I'm already starting to get some little marks, some black marks on my fingers. That's because of the copper. And if that bothers you with copper, because uh, it does tend to tarnish, you can actually spray this with an acrylic sealer after you're done and it will never happen again. And that'll do it for you. Okay, so there is my little bangle shape. Next step is to smash it in the bangle die, which is really the most fun part of the entire project. So I'm just gonna open this up. A lot of people get really confused about these bangle dies. And that's kind of why I wanted to do this project for you guys so that you understood how it works and um, all the different pieces and parts of it. So I'm just gonna kind of show you the anatomy of the bangle die before I smash anything. So first of all, there's two main parts, a top and a bottom, and it just opens up just like that. And you can see when you get one of these, they're gonna be a little bit greasy. And that is, there's a reason for that. It keeps it from rusting. And every once in a while, I actually oil mine with a little bit of bicycle oil kind of keeps it from sticking. But then also there's gonna be these little spacers and this is doesn't have any use as far as using the bangle die. It's really just to keep the sides of the jaws slightly separated while it's not in use so that they don't get stuck together. And so when you put this away, you always wanna don't lose your spacer, put the spacer back on and then put the lid back on and keep it stored like that. That way your two sides of your bangle die won't get stuck together. When I first get my bangle dies, and this might happen to you guys too, they'll, they'll feel like they're stuck together because the little spacer won't be in there. And what I generally do is I drop it on a hard surface, usually carpeted hard surface, until it kind of loosens the jaws. So don't ever feel like you're, there's something wrong with it. This is a metal smith's tool. There's a lot of ins and outs to using metal working tools that are not like what you would think if you're just a crafter. So um, take your time with it love on it, it will work. Now, I've got it opened up, and so the next step is to take my bangle that we're working on and pop it down into the bangle die. Doesn't matter where the two little legs are, just as long as the bangle is centered on the bangle die. Now, if you made a larger bangle, um, it can be a little bit harder to get this to work because the, the bangle die is not really big, but you can overlap certain spots, like you can overlap your legs a little bit. It'll give it a little bit of a divot in one spot, but it's okay. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just drop this down. That's like a little key, and there's a little matching part that goes right here on the bangle die. You just wanna line those two up and then bring that down onto the top of your metal. So, leg sticking out the side, bangle centered on the inside of the die, and now the two wavy pieces are separated out, and we're ready to go. So, now for the heavy hammer. So, the way I like to do this is I like to do it kind of like a clock. 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock. So I'm gonna hammer top, bottom, side to side like that. And you're gonna do it twice at least to make sure you get a good impression in your bangle. So top, bottom, side to side. Or you can go 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock. Had to think about that. And I'm gonna give it one more just because I wanna make sure I get a really deep impression in my metal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it one more time. And this will not ruin the steel bangle die, I promise. It'll ruin your fancy hammer though, so don't use it with your fancy hammer. All right, so now all you have to do is open it up. Ta-da! And look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, so now all we have to do is create a little hook and eye type closure for this. And I'll show you what that looks like on this one that I did earlier. So you can see I made the little eye right there. 
and then this is a little hook that comes through. And I always make sure I close them up. I don't do it like where you can actually hinge them closed on a round bangle. If you do it on an oval shaped bangle mandrel, you can leave it open if you want to. I, they always get caught in my hair, so I never do that. But you guys are welcome to leave them open so that you can open and close them if you want, because then you can make a little bit smaller bangle. All right, so here is my bangle. First step is going to be to make that hook. All right, so I'm just, I just bent that last little piece in just a little bit because I wanted it to be exactly even. And so then I'm going to dun, 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 take this and bring it off to the side into a little 90 degree angle. Don't worry if you have to kind of misshape the metal a little bit, we'll fix that here at the end. So then I'm going to clip that off right at about a half inch long, like so, with my flush cutter. Now when you use that flush cutter, make sure you use that flat flush side up against the piece that's gonna stay on the bracelet because this side right here that's divoted like that, that's gonna leave a point on the metal and you do not want a point on your bracelet. It can be on your scrap wire because you're not gonna use that, but not on your bracelet. And then I often will do this, just take a little flat file and because it's copper, I can smooth that out just a little bit. You can use an emery board, anything you have lying around is fine. I just happen to like to use a flat file. So then I'm going to use my bell shaping plier. And this second one on here is right at about a four millimeter loop, so it works perfect for this. All right, I'm gonna grab this and bring this into a circle, like so. There, see how that worked? Perfect, okay. Now the next step is we wanna make a little hook for our eye. Just straighten that up just a little bit with my flat nose plier. So I'm gonna make a little hook. I generally will bring this out flat like so and kind of keep my finger on the mark there and just do about a quarter inch hook. Usually it's plenty and then clip that off. So now this part is gonna get hammered into a paddle. So first thing I'm gonna do before I do anything else is I'm gonna take that wire rounder and I'm gonna round the end of this piece because if you do that, your paddle is gonna have a rounded curve. If you do not do it, it's gonna be pointy and flat on each side, which is not as cute. So take your wire rounder, pop it on the end. This is a great tool because it works with different gauges of wire. This is the one meant for the 14 gauge and up. So you just pop that on there and just kind of round out the end before you do anything else. You know, metalsmiths use tools like this all the time, but theirs look really complicated. This is a great tool because it doubles as a bead reamer as well. And one of my absolute favorites for sneaky little tricks like this. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is, I like to hammer these, just gives it a really nice finished look to get a little hammered look on it. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of open the bangle up a little bit, kind of offset those pieces so I can lay this onto my bench block and use my chasing hammer to flatten that out a little bit. Now, if it kind of comes open up a little bit like that one did, you can just take this piece and close it back up again, like so. You can also use a flat nose plier to kind of lift it up and bring it back down so it's a little tighter. And then same thing over here with this piece, I'm just turning it around and I'm gonna make that paddle. Like so. And if you don't love the way it turned out, if it's not quite round enough for you, just take your flat file and just round out those little edges. Usually when I use the cut burr, I don't have to do this, but this one just kind of had just a little bit of an edge on it, so I did that. What The key is to make that really super smooth so it doesn't catch on your hair. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take this little tool here, the bail shaping plier, and we're gonna bring this up like so. Pop it into our little loop. Let me just fix that one more time, make sure he's good and straight. There we 
go. So pop it up in there like so. So see how it's obviously going to make a little hook and eye. And then I grab it with my flat nose plier and pull it down, over, and then press. Just like that. So essentially now that bangle is done. And then the final step for me is, because it's not perfectly round, is just to pop it down onto your bracelet mandrel. And then just give it a hammer right there. And I always hammer, always, 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 right up on the place where I put it together because it kind of finishes it off. And then just go around the bangle with your chasing hammer, this flat domed side and flatten it out. And you can texturize it if you want to. I'm really just hardening it up and flattening it out a little bit. And then I'll go right back over on my finish just to finish it off. Pull that back off, check everything out just in case it got a little crazy. And that one did just a tiny, tiny bit. So I'm just gonna bring it in and bring this guy over and squeeze him down one more time. So it's finished and that's perfect. I love it. So then you can just add it to your bangle stack, which I love to do. The more you have, the better it is. And it's cute too. Look at that, that little piece. I don't know, I think it just adds a fun little touch to it. You can do it guys. So one more thing I wanted to talk to you guys about since we're working with copper, liver of sulfur and copper are meant to be together. They're like perfect partners. Um, if you take the liver of sulfur and uh, put it in a cup of warm water, doesn't have to be hot, just warm, um, it will actually oxidize the wire, turn it black. And then you can use a piece of steel wool to polish it back off and it gives it a really neat effect. So if you look at my rings right here, these are some other rings that I've made using a, a, diff a little different technique than what I showed you today. But I actually oxidize these with liver of sulfur and then I use that steel wool to polish it off. And then I sprayed it with that acrylic sealer I told you about earlier. So you can do that or you can just keep them shiny like this and you can also use the acrylic sealer. So it's whatever you like, whatever look you like, but copper is fun because you can change it like that. So I just wanted to remind you guys of everything that you need to get started with this project. First of all, copper wire. I uh, do not recommend a plated wire. Use a copper wire, a sterling silver wire, or even a brass with this type of a project. And then you're gonna need lots of metal smithing tools. First of all, I used my handy dandy steel bracelet mandrel. I also had that bangle die that had the wavy pattern in it. And I used my bench block, a couple different hammers, a good heavy brass mallet works fantastic. And then I also used my basic chasing hammer. Then a little cut burr or wire rounder as this one's called. And then some basic tools. You're gonna need a good flush cutter. You're going to need a uh, bale shaping plier. And you're also gonna need a flat nose plier for this project. I did use a permanent marker just to mark my wire. And then I recommended if you guys wanted to oxidize your wire or your bangles after you're done, some liver of sulfur. This is your flat file that we use to round out the wire. And then there's that ruler that I used to measure. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys would like to pick up some supplies like the ones I worked with today, check out the links down below. What other no solder projects would you like to see? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell and we'll see you again next time.